Today I'll be replacing this old furnace humidifier with this new one. So this is the old furnace humidifier. It has a date on it. I think it says 1983 and the plastic finally broke off. It fell off the side of the furnace. It couldn't be repaired. Every time I tried to put a metal screw in through it, it just broke. This plastic is just falling apart as you can see. And I'm not going to be replacing everything. I'm going to leave the humidistat. So when you buy the kit, it comes with all the parts you need. The humidistat, the transformer that goes to the main board, I'll save these parts in case they ever go bad. So because I bought the same model, it's a general 1042L, same model, same size, everything should fit pretty much the same. So originally, I went over to Home Depot and for $200, I bought their Honeywell model, thinking, it's a humidifier, everything will match up. I ended up returning that because of a few things. First, it was vertical, not horizontal, and didn't fit in the same space. Second, the solenoid was on the wrong side. And third, the outlet port didn't match up. So I checked on Amazon and I was able to find the exact same humidifier as I already had and it was $50 cheaper. So my recommendation to you is buy the same humidifier as the one you're replacing. So let's get started. Step one, turn off the furnace. Another good thing to know is once you have this all off, this is a great time to get in here and vacuum out that A-coil, look in there, see if it's in good condition or if it's rusty. Uh, get in there with a flashlight and a camera and uh, check out the condition. Mine looks really good, so I'm just going to get in there with a shot vac and clean it out. All these come with a paper template to tell you where the opening should be and where you should drill the holes. and. Because I bought the same model, um, the holes line up perfectly, so I don't have to re-drill anything. Otherwise, I would have to drill in these spots where the holes and the screws are going to go. One thing I am going to do is widen up this hole. You can see they cut, didn't cut everything out. First, you could put the four screws uh, on the sides, two on each side. Put those halfway in. It will allow you to hang the, the unit, and then you can sink all the other screws in. Okay, everything's in place. The hose, the, the outlet hose is hooked up. Now this is the reason I bought this unit. It's mounted horizontally. That Honeywell unit was vertical. It didn't fit and it had the solenoid over here on the side, which meant I was gonna have to run extra pipe to get to it. With this, the solenoid is mounted in the exact same spot on this left side and the plumbing's all set. One thing I did notice in the picture, it shows the solenoid mounted like this with the wires sticking out from the top. And then it said in the instructions, make sure it's the flow arrow is pointing in the direction you want the water to go. Well, mine, it has in and out. So it's actually going to be mounted like this, where the water is going to be flowing out. And another good check, grab the old part. Although it's different and there's different writing on here, it has in and out. Just to confirm, then yes, that is the correct way to go. And a little crescent wrench does the job of tightening that up. Now this upper spout, it mounts by first sliding this piece on the, on the pipe first, then this little expander, and then it sits down and screws into the top. Now as far as wiring, if you're doing this new, you're going to have to go back to your uh, circuit board on the furnace and wire in that transformer. One tip is to use a zip tie to hold it in place because a couple years ago, my transformer fell off and the wires came unplugged. So make sure that transformer is in there secure. It's pretty heavy. But since uh, mine's already in, I'm just going to use the transformer I had. It supplies 24 volts AC and I'm just going to connect it with um, some wire connectors to the solenoid. Thank you. 
Now I said you're going to have to run a wire from the uh, transformer, the circuit board, to the solenoid. You also have to run another wire, and that's to the humidistat. Um, you can put that on a wall, on the side of the furnace, typically is where it goes. Somewhere easy access. Again, my furnace already had that on here from the uh, old humidifier, so I'm going to leave it on there. But again, you would have to run another wire to the solenoid, so there's actually two wires coming to this unit. Next, I'm going to be installing the filter on the top and bottom pieces, and uh, a real nice easy way to do it is you put the filter in, and then you can just lift it up through the bottom. So that's the bottom installed, and now the top. It's better to install this top piece, then with this front open, you can see when you're pushing up that filter, you can see that it lines up right and it goes in much smoother. So um, I would uh, suggest doing the top first, then the bottom. Another thing is if you ever use headlights like this, it's really convenient to have a flashlight. Um, this is one of the best ones I've ever had. I've had a whole bunch of them and this one was uh, around 10 bucks, super bright, two different sources of lights. It uses one rechargeable, one of those big lithium batteries that comes with it, and it has a wireless feature where you can turn it on or off just by waving your hand near the sensor. It's super nice. So here's the drain hose that comes with it. It's all coiled up, um, and you need this little clamp. You can't really squeeze it with your fingers. It's pretty hard. So you're going to have to use some pliers to uh, compress that spring. So put it on a couple inches, then feed it onto that drain pipe. And then lift that clamp up over the plastic. Now the last step is going to be making this uh, vent airtight. Um, previously they used some sort of like a silicone, high temp silicone on here. Uh, I don't have that. I'm just going to be using some of this aluminum tape. Also, there are two spots where you can put metal screws here and here. So uh, I can only fit one. I've tested it. There's not a lot of play in here. So I'm going to really push it in, get one sheet metal screw in to hold it, and then I'll put the tape to make it airtight. Yeah, I'm going to have to pre-drill it. You know what? There's such little uh, overlap on that. I'm not going to be able to get a screw in there. So I'm just going to have to rely on the tape for now. That seems like it should do just fine. That is holding it nice and tight and it's not going anywhere. So I'll wrap that all the way around. So it's time to turn the furnace back on and make sure water comes back out when you turn up that humidistat. And sure enough, right when the furnace kicked on, I heard a big tick. Uh, so let's check to see if water's coming out. Well, I just checked up here at the spout, and no, there is not water coming out, which means I might have this wired backwards. So I'm going to turn the humidistat down, flip the wires, and see if that works. Okay, the wires are switched. Trying to turn the humidistat back on. I heard another tick. I know why. I forgot to turn the water back down at the valve. That's why it's not coming out. There's a saddle valve I shut off. Right up there. Now let's try it. There we go. Water is now coming out. So that's what it was. It wasn't the wires. I think they could be either way. Um, now I can see water's coming out. You can check by looking in here. I can see water coming out in the filter. So it's all back together under an hour. So I hope this helps. Thanks. Kind of blurry. I'm going to be blurry in every one of these shots, aren't I?